Have you ever asked yourself the question, should I start a business as a sole trader or should I start a business as a limited company? Or are you asking yourself the question, what is the main difference between these two entities? And lastly, which would be right for you to start your business with? Well, don't worry, in this video, I'm gonna be covering these questions and more where we're gonna be looking at the differences between a sole trader and a limited company. I'm gonna be looking into the advantages and disadvantages of each and giving examples where you might want to move from one entity to the next. So this video could be super helpful for you if you are thinking about starting a business or online business, or you have actually pulled the trigger and started your business venture to understand these two different types of entities and just to know whether you have set your business up in the right way moving forward. So hey there, Tim Peekman here. Before I jump into the content of this video, I just wanna highlight if you are serious about starting an online business, I've put together a super simple five-step system for you to actually get up and running within 30 days. Head on over to timpeekman.com forward slash five steps to download your copy today. It's a super simple PDF download. Go ahead, download it and take action. Now, I just wanna start off by a couple of disclaimers. I am not a financial advisor. I am not a trained accountant. This is just my opinion as a business owner and from my experience of these two different types of entities to try and give you the best advice possible. And this video will only make complete sense if you are based in the UK or if you have a business based in the UK, but there will be some similarities and differences. For example, if you're based in the US, the main principles will be very similar, but I'd always encourage you to read the small print of wherever you live or wherever your business is based for you to have that full understanding. So the first thing we have to define are the main differences between a sole trader and a limited company. So a sole trader is seen as a self-employed business owner where legally the business and the business owner are seen as the same legal entity. Whereas a limited company, the business and the business owners or the directors or the shareholders are seen as two separate entities. So just to put this into some context then, if I was working for a company as an employee and I started a sideline business selling my, my time or my services for money, the government would immediately default me and view me as a sole trader. And this leads me on to the advantages of being a sole trader. And now the first one is you can start immediately. There's no real requirement to submit any formal paperwork. You can just sync in line with your self-assessment tax returns at the end of the year, your personal tax, working as a sole trader. So there is very little paperwork involved. You don't have to submit any confirmation statements to company's house or any corporation tax returns or PAYE. You can get started right away. So you also have complete control over your business as a sole trader. You can actually make decisions quickly and move fast on actions you want to take. So after you've submitted all your self-assessment tax returns for the year, you then get to keep everything else as profit. And also you can keep everything private if you wish. You do not have to publish all of your financials on Companies House. So the disadvantages of being a sole trader then, and the biggest one for me is you hold all the risk, like you, not the business, as the business is seen as the same entity as you. So if you did get into trouble or any debt, you might have to start selling off some personal assets to actually repay that debt. There's also limited funding opportunities. So if you're looking to raise capital or raise cash, Investors and lenders are less willing if you are a sole trader. It's just because there is more risk involved for them. It can also be seen as a less tax efficient business model and you're paying the tax rate at whatever tax band you're in. So anywhere between 20 to 45% as opposed to a limited company, which is anything up to 19% corp tax. You might be seen as having less credibility as a sole trader and this really comes down to uh, less legal protection. And also you have no protection over your business name as a sole trader. So anyone could take out another business and start trading as your name, which is not ideal. So moving on to the advantages of having a limited company. And the biggest one for me is limited liability. So the government actually see limited companies as two separate entities from their owners, their directors and their shareholders. So if you were to get in a bit of trouble, um, and you were to lose quite a lot of money, that company could fold and it wouldn't touch any of your personal assets. And like I mentioned earlier, it is more tax efficient. You can pay up to the 19% corporation tax. 
as opposed to the 20 to 45% of your, your personal tax. And also there's other ways or more tax efficient ways of taking money out of the business in terms of dividends. Also the increased level of legal protection makes you more attractive to either investors or people lending you money. So it will help with all of your funding opportunities. And lastly, you're likely to be looked upon as having more credibility with those stakeholders and business partners that you work with. So what are the disadvantages of having a limited company then? The biggest one is it is more complicated to set up. There will be more paperwork, more confirmation statements, more tax returns, more PAYE documents to submit and publish on Companies House. And in turn, you're gonna have less privacy with your financials because these are public records for anyone to access at any point in time. So hopefully that helps with the advantages and disadvantage of both of these different types of entities. Another question I get asked is, can I change from one to the next? So usually, can I change from a sole trader into a limited company? And the answer to that is yes, of course you can. So some examples where business owners might be looking to change from a sole trader to a limited company might be because they're earning more money and they wanna try and be a little bit more tax efficient. Might be looking to grow the company a bit quicker, so raise some capital or raise some funds to increase the size of the team to grow quicker. Or it simply might be because they wanna increase the business reputation and their image to try and increase the chances of getting business partner deals and working with other companies. So which one should you start with then? It's entirely up to you, it's entirely your call. But as a business owner with experience of running multiple companies, I would probably just say get started as a sole trader, get up and running and get the cash in the door. And then you can always look to switch to being a limited company down the line. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found value in understanding the differences between the two types of legal entity, sole trader, limited company. Hopefully you found value in the advantages and disadvantages of each and hopefully you've identified which one would suit you best at this stage in your business journey. And that link once more, if you are serious about building an online business, I've got a super simple guide. Go ahead and grab it, timpeatman.com forward slash five steps, where I spell out my five step process for generating online revenue. Until next time, I'll see you on another video real soon.